This is Tony, a computer vision engineer from Always AI. In this video, I'll be walking you through a performance benchmarking study done on NVIDIA's Jetson devices. And for this benchmarking study, we use a standard computer vision application. What is an edge device? An edge device is a physical piece of hardware that acts as an entry and an exit point for data traveling between networks. Edge devices often transmit, route, process, monitor, filter, translate, and store data between two networks. For a computer vision application, the edge device is where your application does its magic. You have the frames coming in from the cameras and then you, you apply all the, um, you process the whole frame and uh, run the whole application on the edge device. It's a translation center that ingests images from your camera and spits out a gold mine of visual data. With so much computing power, edge devices are relatively small. So now edge devices are in essentially computers or machines that are physically present at the edge. And in this case, the edge means the physical location or of where the particular application is, is relevant to. For instance, take an, a, a computer vision application that's running in a restaurant. If the whole, all the streams coming from inside the restaurant is processed in a device that is present within the restaurant in the same physical location as the restaurant, then we would say that it is an edge that so that the data is at the edge between the physical location and the network. So what are the advantages of uh, edge devices? Uh, there are four major advantages of edge devices. Faster response time. And this faster response time mainly comes from the edge device being physically present at the location that's relevant to the application so that you don't really have to transmit the data. And there's no network dependency. It has, doesn't have to be connected to the network. It can It is fully self-sustained uh, machine that can process um, the whole application. And security, since there is no data leaving the premise, it adds a layer of security um, to, the, to the edge device and for, for the data that, that is uh, relevant for the customers. And then it is cost effective since many of these edge devices are custom made for many small and specific applications. Uh, it cuts out a lot of the processors and many other components that, that you would find in a, in a general purpose computer. So the edge devices are generally very cost effective. What is the best edge device out there? First of all, it's a flawed question because there is no such thing as a best edge device. It is very much dependent on the customer's needs. And it de depends on many factors. To list a few, how many cameras would you need? And because some edge devices come with support for two cameras, some come with support for 10 cameras. So some, uh, based on this, you get to choose the edge device. And then there is, uh, do you really require real-time inferencing? Some, in some cases, some applications, although they handle a lot of data, they don't require real-time inferencing, in which case you could you could cut down on the cost of the edge device. Is it reliable? Is it cost-effective? And is it available? Uh, the availability is is a point that was uh, that that we could see uh, it happen in the past two years uh, due to chip shortages. Many of the devices were not really available, slowing down in the deployments. So it's um, it's important to check the availability of the device if you're planning to go ahead with one edge device. To provide our customers with a more accurate recommendation about which edge device to use, we put several popular devices to the test. AJX Odin, Odin NX, Xavier NX, AJX Xavier. So these were the four devices that we used for this study. And um, the in essence, what we are doing here is that we are trying to study how a particular edge device performs for different application requirements. And based on this, we derive the empirical evidence to suggest to our customers, hey, this 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 might best fit your need. The model used in this study is YOLO V3. The input dimensions of the model is 416 by 416. It's It was uh, the darknet framework, which was a native framework used, and it was compiled to a tensor RT format, and then the precision of the model is FP16. 
The flow of the application has seven standard steps. So the first step would be to receive the input data. The second one would be to read the data. This is the data that's coming in from the cameras. And then the third would be to perform pre-processing on the data. And this pre-processing is generally the steps that is uh, based on the input that, that the particular model is expecting. And then pass the image data for inference. So this is the inference that's being run uh, on the images and then post-process the inferred results, and then simulate additional algorithms. And in this case, what we're doing here is that in any computer vision application, in addition to just a model inference, most people would have some pre-process post-processing logic, how you would handle the data that's processed, and then you display the results, or uh, you have some form of an output for the whole application. Either it could be publishing it to cloud, or it could be saving it to the the machine or the edge device itself, or just having uh, just write the results or whatever uh, that you infer from the experiment into a log file. The variables in the experiments were number of streams, batch size of the model, and number of instances or processes. So while varying these three, where you get different sizes and different situated uh, scales of application. So you know, a, a, a large scale application might have uh, many streams coming in and how you would like to process it can be handled in two different ways. One is batching them or you would want to have them handled parallelly by through the multi-processing approach. So we uh, do all three. The, we take the number of streams and then have them uh, processed in different ways. And based on this, multiple experimental configurations were generated which you will see in the upcoming slides. The metrics studied were inference FPS. Now, inference FPS is, is the time taken by uh, the by the edge device to just run inference on the model. And total FPS is the time taken for the whole application, right from the step number one, which is to re which is acquiring or reading the frames all the way to display. So this whole iteration, uh, the time taken between the ends of these two would be considered in total FPS. And then you have the device stats. Now, device stats is something that we used, we studied while the application was being run. So we were constantly, we had it uh, in its running in a separate process and constantly query for these four device stats. Like the device stats that we studied were temperature, GPU usage, RAM usage, and power consumption. So temperature, because you don't want the device to heat up, uh, under heavy loads, so that's something good to monitor. GPU usage, because you don't want your GPU to max out, or uh, you want to see how well the, the edge device handles a particular application load. And uh, same goes for RAM and uh, power consumption as well. Here are the experimental configurations. Now these experimental configurations are grouped based on the device. Uh, first one that you, you're seeing on the screen here is AGX Orin. In AGX Orin, uh, we have we had multiple experimental configurations for these, and uh, we studied for each of the we study the metrics for each of the configuration that you see here. For instance, let's take number line the last line here in this experiment. The model that was used uh, was a model that was compiled for a batch size of twelve, so it's expecting twelve frames, and all of them is running on one instance, and the number of streams is is 12. So you have 12 different camera streams coming in. All of them are batched into one um, into, into one package, which has a batch size of 12. And all of them is passed for inference at the same time. And here the instance just mean the number of processes. So it's ha all handled under one process. Whereas in the case of a batch size of six, when you have a batch size of six, it can process be, be processed in two different ways uh, in this experiment. So the first one is it, it handling six streams. So you have six streams coming in and then you're batching them all under one process and passing them for inference. So now it's handling six different streams under one instance. Whereas if you have 12 different streams and if you, and we also test it for a configuration where you take the 12 streams and then pass it as two different instances and each running a batch size of six. So you have first process running a batch size of six and the second process running a batch size of six. Together, it's running 12 different streams. 
Similarly, we have the experimental configuration for Oren NX, Ajax Xavier, and Xavier NX. So let's look at the summary. And here, this is a summary which uh, summarizes the opinions uh, our, and the, or the inferences that we gathered from this study. However, if you would like to take a deeper look at the at the tables and, and the graphs, we have them all in the link provided along with the video. The link is to an article uh, that we had published in the past with uh, all the graphs and tables and on them. So uh, you would get a deeper understanding uh, if you're interested in looking at the numbers. Um, in summary, we were able to study each edge device and uh, derive inference on them in different categories. So the category number one would be the total FPS and under which we saw Ajax Oren perform the best. Since it's a device that's of a better configuration compared to the edge devices, it showed a better performance in terms of FPS. And um, for RAM usage, Ajax Xavier um, used the least amount of RAM by percentage. And then for GPU usage, we had Ajax Oren using the least in, in all the tests. Uh, and this can be explained by its uh, better GPU configuration compared to the other devices. And power consumption, Oren NX consumed the least amount of power for all the experiments. And as far as temperature goes, Ajax Xavier recorded the least temperature for all the devices and none for all the experiments. And one common observation that we notice is that uh, when you are uh, running higher number of streams, um, batching them and passing them for inference has a better performance in terms of uh, the total FPS of the application uh, as opposed to having them processed in different processes or different instances. The advantages of using Always AI is that Always AI provides unparalleled hardware flexibility. So we provide such benchmarking studies and also we support many different edge devices. So we are, we are flexible uh, in terms of supporting our customers. In addition to supporting all edge uh, Oren devices, we also support multiple jetpack versions. We validate our Ajax Oren, a Oren NX, Xavier NX, and Ajax Xavier. So you may never have to reflash your device. So we cover the majority of the setup that, that you would have to go through, which reduces a lot of lead time. And Always AI's Edge IQ integrates with all legacy devices and supports Tensor RT for ultimate hardware adaptability. Always AI can perform similar tests for our customers on any edge devices. So we, when we support certain edge devices, we support it with we back we try to back it up with empirical evidence as to why we say what we say. So that way, um, uh, it streamlines the customer performance and uh, the customer is very confident about uh, the steps that we are taking. You can manage and monitor your edge devices remotely using Always AI's remote deployment. I hope you found this presentation helpful. Thank you.